was going to try, loved ones, to go on to the next verse in Ephesians. And uh, it's uh, 4 and 23, and I think both London and Raleigh are more or less together on that verse. Ephesians 4 and uh, 23, and it runs, uh, it's the bottom of page 1019, be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And the previous verse, you remember, was put off your old nature, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful lusts. And we talked about deceitful lusts, you know, that it's not just sex and all that stuff, but it's desires that deceive you into thinking that's how you'll get satisfaction in life. And of course, if we had the diagram, I'd show you again how we tend to use our minds, you know, to get satisfaction from all kinds of things. And we try to get a sense of importance from people's attitude to us and happiness from our circumstances and a sense of security from the things we own and possess. And those are the deceitful lusts. They're desires that we think will give us the satisfaction that we can only get from God himself. And what uh, Paul is saying is uh, our whole natures are corrupt because of those. They're corrupt. And uh, what I think we don't realize is they're corrupt to the point where they can't help us. And I think that's part of the mistake we make in regard to the mind. Uh, we forget that the mind of the flesh is enmity against God. It is not subject to God's law, neither indeed can it be. And we don't take that seriously. We really think that the mind is still able to help us. And that actually, believe it or not, is the heart of what's wrong with the how-to books. The how-to books are, are very good in many human ways, but they're useless for bringing us into freedom from self because they work on the basis of a mind that is itself not subject to God's law, neither indeed can it be subject to God's law because it's utterly utterly corrupt and it's utterly used to depending on people and things and circumstances for all that we need and so the mind itself is corrupt and it can study the how-to books and it can study and agree with the how-to books but it cannot do what God wants it to do and it will never do it and it seems to me that's one of the Errors we keep making, you know. And we agree with the Romans 8 and 7. We agree that it says the mind of the flesh is enmity against God. It is not subject to God's law, neither indeed can it be. But yet we think, yes, yes, that's the old mind. It's not the mind that I have now. And too often we're living with the mind of the flesh. And that's what we're using. And that's why when we introspect with the mind of the flesh, we get as deep as doesn't matter, you know. This business of getting to the ground of our hearts. We d we'll never get to the ground of hearts. Why? Because the mind of the flesh doesn't want to get to the ground of its heart. And the mind of the flesh is not subject to God's law, and it can't be. It can't be. But I really think that many of us spend our lives in slavery because we hear the message of victory over sin and we think we can get into it ourselves. We think we can think our way through this thing and we can obey our way into it. And we think that somehow or other, with the aid of our minds and the help of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to come into deliverance. And we are still in charge of the whole operation. And we end up self-managing our sanctification, which is impossible. What we end up with is a very, very serious consecration. A very serious setting ourselves apart as well as we can do it from bad things and setting ourselves apart to God as well as we can do it. So we end up 
with a human consecration. And we wonder why there's no power over sin. Because, of course, there hasn't been a real act of sanctification. There is only one who can sanctify us, and that is the Holy Spirit. And he is only able to sanctify us when we have faith. That's the thing that comes home to me. I think that many of us listen to the whole message and we say to ourselves, yes, I've got the idea. I, I, I've got the idea. It's as you say, as if my old self had been crucified with Christ. That's it. I have to grasp that idea and I have to exercise my mind about that and then I have to exercise my will. And to us, it's still an idea. It's still an idea. I, uh, I was awake at 3, 3.30, you know, and at 4.30 I was rowing, or 5 o'clock I was rowing. And, uh, of course, uh, I'm, if anybody's affected by cold uh, English morning, <laughs> here's the guy that's affected by cold English morning. And so uh, uh, when I headed out there in the shorts, etc., and walked on and then got to that gymnasium, that was the last place I wanted to be. Uh, and it was just great, you know, because I settled, set myself right away. That old poor creature that used to be uncomfortable in this situation, that could not produce any energy at this time of the morning when he hadn't slept too well, that old creature was crucified with Christ and is dead and gone. And then, of course, I had a good time on the rowing machine. There's magic in faith. There's magic in faith. It's not just an idea that you were crucified with Christ. It isn't. You were crucified with Christ. And that's the only reason that anything can happen in your life here. And if you keep on thinking that that's just an idea or a mental thought that will help you to exercise your will. You're nowhere near truth. The fact is, each one of us has been destroyed in Jesus. And that thing has gone and is dead and is destroyed. And the only thing of you that really lives is living at this moment at the right hand of God in Jesus. And that is the truth. And then, on the basis of that, you use the mind that is in you, that you have in Christ Jesus. You use that mind. You have that mind in you which you have in Christ Jesus. You have Christ's own mind within you. And you use that mind to show you your life and to show you the truth and to lead you forward and to go step by step with the Holy Spirit. But it's first on the basis of that faith that you have been crucified with Christ and that that's not just an idea. You have to finally face all the consequences of that. If you're crucified with Christ, then you do not deserve that amount of respect here on earth. And you don't need that amount of respect here on earth. And you don't need anybody to look up to you or to praise you or to avoid criticizing you. Because that has all been crucified with Christ. And you are in Jesus at the right hand of God. And everything is different. But it's all based on the reality that you actually have been crucified with Christ. That you've been destroyed in him. And that you no longer exist. 
And if you say to me, isn't the mind of the flesh always trying to avoid that? Of course it is. You betcha. You betcha. Of course the mind of the flesh is always trying to avoid death. It's always trying to avoid destruction. It's always trying to get around it. It's always whispering to you, now, yes, just think that way and then exercise your will and it'll work. You'll see, you'll see, and you'll still be in control. And then the Holy Spirit is saying to you things like, would you be willing to be thought the stupidest person here in this group? Would you be willing to th be thought the stupidest, the greatest failure in this group? Would you be willing for my sake to be that? Would you be willing never to have your own way again? Never to have a cup of coffee when you want to have a cup of coffee? Would you be willing? Would you? So they give him vinegar, you know, and you can't do without coffee. So that's what it means, you know. It means the Holy Spirit interpreting to you what being in Jesus means for you personally. What the consequences of it will be for you personally. Are you willing never to have just physical comfort? Would you? Would you be willing never to have physical comfort? Never to be just as warm as you want to be? Would you be if it were for Jesus' glory? Would you mind a little cut, Lord? A little cut in your side, perhaps. You know. A little scrape on your head. That's what it means. It means you facing Jesus, who bore you to death in himself on Calvary, and saying, Lord, whatever, whatever. Yes, I will be thought of as the dum-dum in this whole operation. I will be thought of as the greatest failure in this operation. Yes, I will be willing never to have clothes that are warm enough, if that's your will. I will be willing never to have complete rest and peace physically, if that's your will. Yes, whatever, Lord. That's what it means. It means getting, well, that's one of the old saints said, you know, you, you remember the story. He had been seeking clean heart, sanctification, fullness of the Holy Spirit for years. And at last, he said to his friend John, John, I got it. Yesterday, I got it. And John said, how did you get it? And he said, I just got honest with God. I just got honest with God. And I think that's what it is, you know. The mind of the flesh will not bring you through. You using your own head and your own cleverness will never get through to a work that only God's Holy Spirit can do in you. You'll get through to a, a fine degree of consecration and commitment, but you'll never get through to the work of the Holy Spirit cleansing your heart through faith unless you see that faith is not just believing, it's accepting fully what has happened to you in Christ. It's accepting that fully with all its implications for your present life and for your future life. And then, when you come into a willingness to do that, you experience the light of the mind of Christ within you. And he then takes you on through and into resurrection. But it's, a, it's vital to see, you know, that it's faith that you have been crucified in Christ. It's faith that that has actually happened. It's faith that you have actually ceased to exist. And you only exist now in Jesus, hid with Christ, in God. And then when you come to that willingness, then the Holy Spirit brings to you the mind of Christ and cleanses your heart. 
and then you are delivered from self. But I think that many of you are trying, you know, to carry out that verse, put off your old nature, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceiving lusts. And you're trying to do that by your own effort. You're trying to shrug it off. And there's a certain couple of verses you remember in the New Testament that says, that's to try to bring Christ down or try to bring Christ up. And that's often, it seems to me, what many of us are doing. We're trying to struggle up into Christ, you know, or bring Christ down to us. But we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to take us into Christ and up with him to the right hand of God. So, it's vital to see that it is by faith. If you, by faith, through the Spirit, put to death the lusts of the flesh, if you, by the Spirit, through faith, do that, not through your own efforts, and not through a mind that is hopelessly corrupt, and that is not subject to God's law, and indeed cannot be. I know that was, that was important for me, because I just thought, you can think through this stuff, you know. You can think through it, and you can apply it to yourself. And then I realized, no, there is a deceiving spy within me that will always deceive me, and that is myself. And I need somebody from outside to come in and lead me through this. And then it was that I realized, you know, the Holy Spirit is real, and he is within me, and he is able to lead me out of this and lead me through this. And uh, a person has to come to that place where you see that you cannot do it yourself, that it has to be the Holy Spirit. and that this is something that God has already done. It is a work that has been done. It's based on a fact. It's based on the fact that you have been crucified with Christ. You start with that fact, and you live, therefore, in that fact.